In this video, we will walk through my local VS Code setup and explain a few things. Everyone has their own preferences, but I thought this was a good opportunity to go through why my VS Code looks like it does. When you first open VS Code, it may look similar to this. But I wanted to address a few things here, starting with the sidebar being on the left. The sidebar on the left can create confusion. If we open a file, we can see that if I close the sidebar, it creates this jumping effect, which can be very distracting. So I like my sidebar to be on the right. So if you right click in that Explorer and move sidebar to the right, if you like that too, now when we close it, it doesn't bounce the code around. I'm closing that by hitting Control B or Command B if you're on Mac to set that. Or you can also find it up here in the view appearance and then you can change the sidebar to be closed. Now let's talk about what this file is. This is the settings.json file for the workspace I am currently in. When you create a new folder or directory on your computer, you are automatically in a new VS Code workspace, and you can adjust the settings to be specific to that folder. Here I have these settings added for recording courses to make like my font size bigger and some of the more distracting things and features hidden away. We can also access the global settings file by hitting Control Shift P or Command Shift P if you're on a Mac and then typing settings. And if you click on open settings.json here, it will open up your user settings on the global scale. I have lots of things that are in here, so none of this really matters and I'm overriding them with the local settings.json in my workspace. There is also a more visual friendly version of settings under file, preferences, and settings if you prefer to use that as well. Back in this local workspace settings.json file, I have this last line commented out because if I uncomment it, it will hide that activity bar on the right there. And I am still explaining some of that, so I'm gonna leave it commented out, but in the future videos, I will actually have that hidden away. If we open back up the sidebar, I wanted to point out that you can also see all of your open files that you have open in the top portion of the sidebar. This is really convenient if you have a lot of files open and you just want to switch back and forth between them. So now let's move back down through the activity bar on the side here. Under the file explorer, which is where we see our open files, we have a search option. This is where you can search and perform find and replace functions. The next one down is source control or where we can view, add, and commit files to Git. So right now we don't have a, a repository initialized in this folder, but later in the course when we do have a Git repository initialized, you will be able to see here the files that you've made changes to, add them to Git, and then commit them, which is a really nice UI for that if you're not familiar with the command line. The next one is, I'm actually going to skip this one because this is WSL Remote. And that is something that I run only on my Windows machine and you may not have this one on yours. So I'm running Windows and I use WSL, which is Windows Subsystem for Linux, to make developing and using the command line a little easier on Windows. So I'll just skip over that one for now. And next we have the Run and Debug. Run and debug is a nice debugger tool that VS Code has, but we will not be using it in this course. And the last one on the list here is extensions. So the extensions list I actually have filtered out for just the ones that are enabled. So I've went into this little filter list, this little looks like an upside down flask and clicked enabled. And that way you can only see the extensions that I have enabled in this workspace. So I have installed all of these extensions by clicking install on them when you search for them. But then after that, you can click into this little settings bar and see that you can install, uninstall, disable, and enable for workspaces. So I have all of these enabled for the current workspace that I'm on. So we're going to be using ESLint, Prettier, 
I have that remote WSL one that you probably also won't have. And then Svelte for VS Code is a really nice one for IntelliSense and has a lot of the language support for Svelte. The last thing I want to cover is the color theme here. Right now I had it disabled because I wanted it to look as similar to possible as when you installed it on your machine. So if I enable this for the workspace, it's going to change my color theme back to this night owl. You may search for it in this little search bar, put night owl and install it if you like this color theme or search for another one that you might like even better. This one has just got a lot of good accessibility things figured out and it's good color contrast and things like that. So last but not least, the last thing that I want to cover is the integrated terminal in VS Code. I use this almost exclusively for command line interactions and you can show and hide the terminal by holding control and then the little back tick, which is up by the number one on most keyboards or command and back tick if you're on a Mac. You can also open a new terminal by going up into the top bar to terminal and new terminal and that will create another new terminal for you. But now I have two terminals so I'm actually going to delete that first one off or the second one off. So I use git bash for my terminal type, but VSH or any other format should work similarly here. And now you've got a good overview of how VS Code works and why mine is set up specifically the way it is.